I've noticed in my comment section, a lot of you are still having problems with Hogwarts Legacy in terms of performance, even though a couple of patches have come out. Here's what you need to do. Go to your search bar, type in exploit protection, choose the program settings tab, and then make sure you hit add program to customize. Find the executable for Hogwarts Legacy. Go down to control flow guard. Make sure you check the box that says override system settings, and then uncheck the box or deselect the box that says on and change it to off. Apply the settings, reboot your system. This will help significantly. Please enjoy the video. Earlier this week, one of my best friends called me and said, hey, I'm ready to build a PC. Can you help me build one? I said, absolutely. So we met up at Micro Center on Monday night. We picked out all the parts and then I brought all the parts back here to my place and I put it all together over the last couple of days. And so today I want to test it out some with Hogwarts Legacy. It has the RTX 4070 Ti and an AMD Ryzen 5800X, which is an eight core 16 thread processor. Now, unfortunately, I don't get review samples. So up until now, I have not had the opportunity to play around with a 4070 Ti. So when my friend told me he wanted a 4070 70 Ti, I was, I was quite excited because now I knew I was going to get to play around with it, maybe run some benchmarks. And so that's what we're doing today. If you like this type of content, drop a comment, hit the like button, get subscribed for more content like this. And after all, I don't really run a lot of sponsorships on this channel. So you're, you're really all I got. Help me out. I appreciate it. All right, let's get into the benchmarks. And here we are, Hogwarts Legacy and Hogsmeade RTX 4070 Ti. And I just want to show you real quick, we are starting off at a native 4K with everything maxed out on Ultra. This is everything except for ray tracing. Ray tracing is incredibly demanding in this game. It didn't do well on my 4080. It's not gonna do well on the 4070 Ti, so I'm not really gonna waste my time with that right now. Obviously, if you run ray tracing in this game, you will definitely need some form of frame generation, upscaling, things of that nature, so just keep that in mind. And you can see right here, we're at a native 4K, and for the anti-aliasing mode, we're using NVIDIA DLAA. Everyone seems to think that's better for some reason. Also, this game does not have a dedicated full screen mode, so that is why we're in windowed full screen. Now, all of the stats are in the top left-hand corner, and running around in Hogsmeade, you can see as clear as day that we're below 60 FPS. You can see the CPU temp is only at 48C, so that's really good. The GPU temp is at 62C, 60C, so that's really good as well. And I also have some other stats up there for you to look at from the VRAM to the power usage as well. And yeah, we're not able to hit 60 FPS natively in Hogsmeade at 4K without any type of upscaling or, or anything like that. Now, one thing I do want to do really quickly is I want to leave Hogsmeade and see if the performance increases at all. OK, so we're a little bit further down the hill from Hogsmeade and actually the performance is getting worse. We're down in the 40s now. This is absolutely crazy. And I know 4K is demanding, but I thought the 4070 Ti might do a little bit better here. But let's see what happens if we take to the sky. OK, so we're now in the sky. And as you can see, we're at about 39, 40 FPS, 35 FPS. So yeah, 4K is incredibly demanding here for the 4070 Ti. But what happens when we turn on frame generation? OK, frame generation has now been enabled going back into the game. OK, I guess even with frame generation, for some reason, performance is still not that great. We're still in the 40s. I don't, I don't know what's going on here. I know this game got a patch yesterday and some people were talking about more bugs and maybe that has something to do with it. I'm, I'm not really sure. But if we get off the broom and we start heading, oops, sorry, didn't mean to, <laughs> didn't mean to hit you. If uh, if we get off the broom and we start heading back to Hogsmeade, yeah, wow, we're still in the 40s even with frame generation enabled. That that kind of just blows my mind. What what is going on here? This is not right. Okay, I just looked at the settings. I double checked everything. I honestly have no idea what's going on here. The only thing I can think here is that maybe possibly the patch we just got somehow made things worse, but. Either way, we still have other options here. We can turn settings down. We can turn the resolution down. We can turn on DLSS. Now, I'm not going to turn on DLSS here because I typically only use quality and quality is simply upscaling from 1440p and we're about to do a native 1440p test anyway. But I do want to turn some settings down real fast and see what happens. OK, frame generation is still enabled and I have lowered all the settings down to medium. And oh, yeah, that is much better, much better. There you go. Much better, much better. OK, so now we're closer to 90 FPS. Now, this is native 4K, so no upscaling, but frame generation is enabled. And that's what's really cool here about frame generation is that if you want to play at 4K and your card isn't really capable of doing it, which the 4070 Ti in this particular game is not, frame generation can come in and 
help you keep that native 4K and still give you the frames that you need. And 90 FPS seems to be the sweet spot for a lot of gamers these days saying as a bare minimum, they really want a 90 FPS average. And that's about where we're at right now. So that's pretty good here. So things are looking a lot better at 4K medium with frame generation enabled. Okay, and just for fun, we're gonna turn frame generation off. We're gonna leave it on 4K medium. I'm gonna switch the anti-aliasing mode back over to NVIDIA DLAA, and let's give it a second to recalibrate and see what happens. Okay, at 4K medium, we're, we're still above 60 FPS, so that seems to be the bottleneck here, ultra. Ultra settings seem to be broken or just overly demanding, so if you're playing at 4K and you're not getting the frame rate you want, Medium seems to be the sweet spot. So the 4070 Ti at 4K natively on medium settings can average a little above 60 FPS. And even here you can see we're in the 70s. So that's really good actually. But what happens at 1440p? Okay, and as you can see, we're back in Hogsmeade. Again, 1440p, no upscaling, no frame generation, no ray tracing everything maxed out on ultra settings. And as you can see right here, we were at 65 FPS. Now we're up to 75 FPS but it seems like the overall performance in this area is very much up and down. It's very inconsistent. If I come up these stairs over here, we're gonna dip down and touch the 50s. We do every time, boom, there we go. 55 FPS, 59 FPS. I don't know what it is about that stairway, but every single time I come up that stairway, we dip down to about 55, 59 FPS every single time. If you're going to have some type of performance problems, this is where you're going to find it most likely. And you do spend quite a lot of time in Hogsmeade in the game. And so it makes sense to really benchmark this area. But this is 1440p on Ultra. So now let's see what happens if we leave it at 1440p and we drop it down to medium. Okay, 1440p, medium settings, running around Hogsmeade, we're getting between 85 to 95 FPS. And again, you know, that's very playable, very respectable. I would expect it to be a little bit higher on the medium preset, but look right there, we just dipped down to 55 FPS and now we're in the 70s. I mean, the, the performance overall in this game is actually lacking. It's had a couple of patches now, but it is still lacking. And I don't think this is the limitation of the hardware that we're using. The 4070 Ti is a capable card. The 5800X is a capable CPU. I think this points to game in optimization is what it points to. But once again, we do have access to technologies like frame generation. But I want to test something. We're on medium coming up these stairs. OK, so instead of dipping down to the 50s, we're dipping down to the 60s. And so that's nowhere near as bad, but it is still definitely a dip. So now let's take a look at frame generation and see how much better our performance can be with frame generation enabled. But the first thing we need to do is go back to the preset and turn that back on to ultra. OK, 1440p ultra settings, frame generation enabled. And as you can see, we're above 130 FPS dipping down to 120 FPS, but this is great. This is really good gaming performance overall. And this is why frame generation is so amazing because you can keep your native resolution without having to do any type of resolution upscaling. And therefore that eliminates things like artifacting and shimmering in the corners and things of that nature. But now you can still increase your frame rate. And honestly, this feels buttery smooth to me. It looks very good and we're well above 120 FPS. And my monitor's maximum refresh rate is actually 120 FPS. And so with frame generation at 1440p on ultra, we're able to exceed my monitor's maximum refresh rate. And I think that is absolutely awesome. And so this is a very playable experience and overall it's a very good experience. But now what I wanna do is lower the settings down to low and I wanna disable frame generation but leave it at 1440p for the resolution. And I just wanna see what our overall gaming performance is like here. And I wanna take this and put it back on NVIDIA DLA. Okay, 1440p, low settings, no frame generation, no upscaling or anything like that. And as you can see, our frame rate is about what it already was on the medium quality preset. We're in the 70s, we're in the 80s, occasionally we'll touch 90. So it seems like playing on the low quality preset really doesn't help to improve performance overall. I mean, you can just play on medium and have better graphics and still basically get the exact same performance from what I'm seeing. Now, one more thing I want to do at 1440p is I want to turn frame generation back on. And then from there, I want to go back to the quality preset. I want to increase that to high. And then I want to come down here and I want to turn on 
all the ray tracing options. Now, a couple of reasons for this. Number one, I know we need frame generation for ray tracing. I already know that. We know the ultra preset is a little bit buggy. It does seem to be overly demanding for what you get. So we're gonna take it one step below on the high preset. We will enable frame generation and ray tracing. And overall, let's see what happens. I do need to restart the game in order for these changes to take effect. And now we're back, 1440p, frame generation enabled, ray tracing enabled, high quality preset. And as you can see, running around, we're in the 80s to 90s at times. And again, this is overall a very respectable and very playable frame rate. You're getting high quality graphical settings with ray tracing turned on in a very playable frame rate. Now, the problem here, in my opinion, ray tracing in this game is basically pointless. I don't see any type of noticeable difference whenever I turn it on. I see the frame rate go down significantly. I see performance plummet, but I don't see the graphical options improve at all. Now with a game like Spider-Man, if you turn on ray tracing, you can see a very clear difference whenever you walk up to windows and things of that nature. But in this game, everything mostly looks about the same. And so you're basically giving up performance with nothing really in return to say, hey, this is what I gained from this. Okay, now let's do this. 1440p, we'll put this back on NVIDIA DLAA and we will turn off frame generation. We'll leave it on the high quality preset and we will leave the ray tracing turned on. And as you can see, 1440p, high quality preset with no frame generation, we are well below 60 FPS. We're at 45, 42, 43. It's, yeah, it's not, not really a great experience. Every now and again, we'll peak above 50 FPS, but this is, this is exactly why I did not turn on the ultra quality preset. I know people will leave a comment, hey, why didn't you test ultra? This is why. It can't even run it above 60 FPS on the high preset. Why in the world would you think it could do it on ultra? It can't. Now sitting still, we can touch 60 FPS, but wow, who cares about touching it, right? When we're actually playing the game, we're moving around, you can see we're in the 40s on average. But now let's finish up by playing around with some 1080p. Now lowering the resolution did take away my ability to use Nvidia DLAA, so please be mindful of that. But this is 1080p ultra quality, so let's see what happens. And unfortunately, as you can see, 1080p ultra in Hogsmeade yeah, the performance is really nothing to write home about. But the thing is, I'm kind of confused here and I'm looking at the CPU utilization and it's in the 30s. I mean, it's usually hovering around 34%. And so I wonder if that has something to do with it. I mean, we are above 60 FPS, but just barely. I mean, this game is basically doing nothing at 1080p. But what happens if we lower the settings down to medium? All right, I can't really believe this, but 1080p medium preset, 75, 85 FPS, 95 FPS as we get close to exiting. Wow, this is, um, yeah, it's a little bit disappointing. I'm, I'm not gonna lie. But also look at that GPU utilization, 46%, 45%. So it's like, yeah, we have a 4070 Ti here, but it's not even being utilized hardly at all at 1080p. Now at 1080p, we are more CPU bound and I think most people know this by now. But yeah, it looks like the CPU isn't really being utilized the way that it should. And we already knew this from early access with the deluxe edition. And I think we all assumed they would just fix this with the official day one patch or something like that. But it doesn't really seem like they've done anything to overly improve it. What will frame generation do for us here? Let's go ahead, let's put this back on the ultra quality preset. Let's apply the settings. And there you go. Once again, very similar to 1440p, we are above 120 FPS. And again, that is a very good frame rate. You can definitely play with that. You can definitely have a very good time with that. But at 1080p, I would expect something closer to about 200 FPS. And now we're running around on the ground. You can see we're above 130 something FPS. That's great. Again, we're having to resort to frame generation in order to do that. But I am grateful that with a card like this, we have access to things like frame generation because without it, as you can see, we couldn't even hit 100 FPS. And so just a few things to think about. But hey, that's all I got for this video. This is just pure raw testing. So let me know what you think about it down below in the comment section. Are you playing Hogwarts Legacy? Do you like Hogwarts Legacy? What's your hardware like? How is it running for you? If you got any tips and tricks to help make performance better, be sure to drop that below so other people can see it, please. But if you made it this far in the video, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Please hit the like button. It goes a long way in helping me out. And if you're new, get subscribed. And until next time, E-Rock out.